video I'm going to talk about ways to make your plants look just a little bit nicer. I am in my living room right now. I'm taking a little break from the apartment makeover series just because I wanted to give you guys some plant content. The next apartment makeover episode is going to be about my plant office. I'm excited to show you guys that. I just need to edit it. I'm going to share some small things that I do to my plants that don't cost any money at all or cost very little that I think really improve the look of my plants and make their presentation look much nicer. A common thing I see people say is to always rotate your plants like a quarter inch every week. That way the leaves don't end up just facing one direction. And while I think this is good advice sometimes, I don't think that you always need to rotate your plants. Rotating your plant will give it a completely different look than not rotating it. And I think sometimes just leaving a plant where it is and allowing the leaves to face towards the sun naturally gives a much more grown in and natural placed look to the plant like it actually belongs in that space rather than you just put that plant there a second ago. My Monstera and Philodendron Heteraceum Lemon Lime that are near my tatami mat have been there for six or eight months. Their leaves face towards the window and to me they look very natural and like they should be there and that they have been there for a while because they have the Pelea peperomioides, for example. If you rotate it like most people advise, then you can create a really cool dome structure. The round leaves of the Pelea and the round overall shape of the plant really complement each other. But if you were to leave it in one spot and you didn't rotate it, the plant would take on a completely different look, which I also think looks really nice. I've seen some Pelea where they hang over the pot and all the leaves are like facing forward. And to me, that looks really cool. And it gives a completely different look to the plant. Maybe if you have two of the same plant, you can rotate one and not rotate the other. And it'll kind of feel like you have two different plants just because they look much different. Another example I have is my money tree that is in my kitchen. I've never rotated the plant and all of the leaves face one way. It looks really good from the front, but it looks kind of weird from the back. This plant is in a corner and I think not rotating it makes it really look like it fits in that spot. I think non-rotated plants also often look better in photos if you care about that. You can only really take a photo from one angle, so having all of the plant's leaves face one direction I think really shows up a lot better on camera. So the first thing I'm going to talk about are moss poles. I'll tell you what I use alternatively in a little bit, but I'm just going to talk about moss poles and why I don't like them that much. When I say moss poles, I'm referring to those poles that people stuff with sphagnum moss. So I guess you can lump those coconut stakes in with this as well. I know that moss poles provide a very practical use for the plants, but I think that most moss poles don't look that great. It can detract from the structure and the growth pattern of the plant. There's this Instagram account called Sydney Plant Guy, and he has all of his aeroids on moss poles and his plants really look great. He grows them much better than I do, honestly, but I personally don't have much interest or space or reason to grow really, really large plants, especially a lot of them. So yeah, I do understand like the practical use for moss poles. I'm not saying that you shouldn't use them, but I'm saying that I don't really like how they look. You kind of have to take care of the moss pole as well. In order for the roots of the plant to root into the moss, you have to keep it moist. Once the plant outgrows the moss pole, then you have to propagate it or extend the moss pole. And it just adds up in terms of maintenance. Also moss poles can kind of get expensive. You have to buy the moss and you have to pay for the materials to make them if you're DIYing it and if you purchase them they're probably going to be like $20 or more so it's just an extra expense that I don't think is super necessary. Instead of using moss poles I have three alternatives that I'm currently using. I have some of my aeroids staked on large wood sticks. They don't stick out too much like moss poles do. Typically they're skinnier or as skinny as the actual stem itself. I have my monstera on the left of me that is growing on a wood stake. The leaves sized up significantly without the use of a moss pole. A big reason why people use moss poles is because they want the plant to actually root into the pole. That way it can get bigger leaves and mature quicker. But in my experience, it's not really necessary to use moss poles in order to mature your plant's leaves. For example, I have my Philodendron Glorious and a few other plants that have matured and increased leaf size without the use of a moss pole. It should be pretty easy to find these stakes. I get mine at my local nursery called Yamaguchi Nursery. 
and I see them often at nurseries that have outdoor plants. If they have taller trees, then these stakes are often used to support the tree. And I'm able to purchase five foot ones or 10 foot ones that are only like one to five dollars. So they're much cheaper than moss poles. They're easier to actually get to stand up straight. I think they look nicer and they still provide the benefit of support. The second method that I use instead of moss poles is string. So I use the string and I tie it around my plants. Then I tie it to a hook that I put on the ceiling. You could also probably use a command strip hook if you don't want to make any holes in your ceiling. I just started doing this recently and it's worked really well. I'm doing it for my Philodendron Glorious and one of my Monsteras out in my living room. This acts as an extremely minimal plant stake and it can't really outgrow the string in the hook because if it does grow much taller then you can just cut the string or retie it tighter and then the taller larger plant is supported again. I'll include some pictures of some of the inspiration that I've seen using this method. It helps create a very natural and like overgrown hanging look to your plants. I did this for my Philodendron Glorious and the leaves are still sizing up and it's getting larger and larger leaves. The main con to this is that you can't really move your plant from the spot that it's in once you have it tied up. You're gonna have to water it in place and you can't really like flush out the soil. But I would only recommend doing this string hook method for larger plants anyways. Not being able to move them to the sink or something isn't really so much of a big deal for me. This is a really nice way to stake your plants because you don't have to worry about extending it and it's very cheap. I just use cotton string and a hook from Amazon. Now my next alternative to using moss poles is cork bark. This isn't really the best example because this isn't like the nicest looking plant right now, but this is my Monstera Brolmark's Flame. Pretty juvenile, so it doesn't have the characteristics of the mature plant, but I think using cork bark gives a very natural and structural look to the plant. I would only use this for plants that don't grow too tall. So for example, this Burl Marks flame has really tight internodal spacing, meaning whenever there's a new leaf, the stem doesn't extend too much. So it's gonna take a while for this plant to reach the top of the cork bark. And you can get cork bark from Etsy or eBay or from reptile stores or aquarium stores. What I do with the cork bark is I have some sphagnum moss in between the plant and the cork bark. It kind of functions as a sphagnum moss pole, but I think it looks much nicer. The next tip I have I think is pretty obvious, but I just wanted to say it. Your plant will look much better when it's out of its plastic nursery pot. I know that getting pots for your plants is an added expense, but it doesn't always have to be too expensive. For example, you could use terracotta pots and those are all probably less than $5 or less than $10. And then you could also shop at Ikea. Ikea has a really good selection of pots at good prices. And then you could also thrift pots. I know it's not like super easy to always thrift nice pots. Like you can't rely on it, but I've gotten some pots that I really love that I thrifted. I'll actually show you guys right now. This alocasia is struggling because I forgot to water it, but I got this pot at a thrift store and it has an attached saucer on it made by the ceramic studio that no longer exists anymore. And I only got this for maybe $5, I think. Most thrift stores I've been to have like a garden or plant section. Just take a quick look at their pots because you might find something really cool. Also, I learned recently that you can lime wash terracotta pots. I'll put some pictures here. There's this company that makes lime wash paint for there's this company that makes lime wash paints for terracotta pots. Terracotta pots can often have a little bit of a boho feel, so if that's not really your style, you can lime wash your pots. This shouldn't be a very expensive way to add some variety. You can choose colors that match your decor or match your style. I haven't done this before, so I can't vouch for how well it works, but I think that's something worth looking into. The next tip I have to make your plants look a little bit nicer is to remove the lower leaves of your plant. Something that I feel like is really popular right now and has been popular for a while is to have a tree in your home or kind of have like a structural, interesting shaped plant in your home. And the way that you often get that interesting looking shape is to have the stem be visible. The stem is only visible if the lower leaves are defoliated. Often the lower leaves are the most damaged or most ugly leaves. Removing them also just kind of makes the plant generally look better. I wouldn't go too crazy on removing a bunch of leaves. A lot of people ask about my Dracaena 
Alexa. It is a very large tree-like looking plant. I mean, it is a tree, but most Dracaena reflexas that are available in nurseries look very shrubby. Even if they are really tall, they have a lot of leaves at the bottom. The way that you can make your plant look more tree-like and look more interesting is to remove those bottom leaves. I did this for my avocado plant that's in my kitchen because I wanted it to be more top heavy and have like a very visible stem. The next tip I have is to add top dressing to the top of your pots and to the top of your soil. Often our soil is made of a lot of different things like wood chips or perlite or like a, maybe just like a bunch of different things. I think it can sometimes look a little bit messy. A top dressing of lava rocks or little wood chips or tiny slate rocks makes the plant look much more streamlined and clean. If you've been growing plants for a while, you probably know that perlite will rise to the top when you water it. To me, perlite looks unnatural because it is a very stark white that just doesn't look like it should belong in soil. And then it also creates a very uneven look to the top of your soil. By adding a top dressing, it'll flatten the soil line and tie the look of the plant together. I top dress almost all of my plants and for most of them, I use a mix of Akadama, black lava rock, and yuga pumice, which is like this Japanese pumice that has a more warm, natural color as opposed to like the very stark white. I think the top dressing helps to add a level of cohesion to all of your plants and just make them look like they belong together and belong in your home. You can choose different colors. You could use red lava rock or you could use black lava rock to complement your decor or to complement the plant color or the pot color. So I think top dressing is a very overlooked way to boost the appearance of your plants. Cactus and succulent people really focus on the presentation of their plants with the pots and the soil and the top dressing. I learned a lot by how they display their plants. The top dressing just looks really good. It just looks really good. That's, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. And then the last tip that I have for you guys is to change the way that your plant is growing. What I mean by this is changing the direction or moving the stem so it has a bend to it so the plant looks more interesting. I saw this photo recently of a ficus umbellata that has this super cool, like windy stem. I had no interest in the plant before I saw it manipulated in this way. I found this small channel by this um, very sweet Japanese man. He has videos on how to bend your ficus in this way. He uses ficus umbellata, ficus lyrata, and also ficus elastica. I've also seen him do this with Dracaena reflexa and I think Dracaena marginata. It's just a really cool way to make a regular plant look much more unique and more interesting and make that plant your own rather than just being another ficus. It is your ficus because there's only one that is shaped like this in the entire world and I think that's pretty cool. I'm trying this method with one of my ficus umbellata out on my balcony. I'll update you guys with how it's going. I actually tried this on my variegated money tree and I ended up snapping and breaking the entire plant, but it's growing back now. Proceed with caution. Definitely try this method on plants you don't care about that much first. That way you know what a plant can take in terms of bending. Definitely check out that guy's channel. I'll leave links to it below. He's super sweet. Please give him a lots of support so he keeps making more videos. I've also employed this method on my large Dracaena reflexa. Some of the stems were just growing completely straight. I wanted it to look more organic and curve in certain places. So I've been using string to curve some of the branches to make it look how I want it to look. The strings aren't that noticeable and after a while I can remove the strings because the plant has grown into that shape. Really recommend you check out his channel for information on how to do this because I'm still testing this out myself, but I will update you guys on how it goes. Thank you guys for watching. If you use any of the tips that I just mentioned in this video or you try them out, let me know how it goes in the comment section. I don't think Theo's made an appearance in this video, so I'm just gonna show you guys. He's sleeping right in front of me right now. Thank you.